What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Tried as hard as I could to not yell that, by the way. I wanted to come out smooth. Hey, man. So, shout out to the joiners. Appreciate you guys more than you know. Shout out to the Point of View crew. Appreciate everything. And trip on this. So, I've been asked many times, do you have to join a gang when you go into prison? Is Peckerwood a gang? Can you ride solo? Peckerwood is not a gang. Well, there are gangs with Peckerwood in it. Shout out to OPW, Oildale Peckerwood. The street gang in Oildale, made up of Peckerwoods. But no, Peckerwood by itself is definitely not a gang. In fact, every white boy who comes into prison is a Peckerwood. You'll be walking down the tier, and a black dude or a Mexican dude will say, Hey, Wood! They turn around, what's up? I mean, they don't know your name. Hey, Wood. Yeah, what's up? Can you do this? Can you help me out? Can you do this or that? Everyone is known as a wood right off the top, and everyone has all their respect coming right off the top, too. You don't have to go in and do any kind of heart check. You don't have to go in and do anything to earn people's respect. You got it all coming right away. You have to do something yourself to mess it up for you, to get yourself put on lame status. You have to do something stupid, mess it up for yourself. What's up, little boy? My dog, little boy. I actually named him after a South Sider I was in county jail with years ago. His name was Little Boy. I thought that was pretty cool. And so, my dog's name's Little Boy. I found him running down the road. I couldn't handle it. A busy road down the Stockdale Highway. He was freaking running. His little baby, white little dog. He's gonna get hit by a car. Couldn't handle it, man. I snatched his ass up. Brought him home. Named him Little Boy. Been kicking it tough ever since. So, Sidetrack myself a little bit, but he's worth it. Hey, man, so no, Peckwood is not a gang. Everyone comes in. Hey, what's up, Wood? You have to put, do something stupid. Put yourself on lame status. For instance, when I was at Soledad, the second time, on North Yard, we just had a big riot with the Northerners. It's on and cracking. And in fact, an incident has happened where a bunch of white dudes were showering down in the first tier, obviously. I guess I would say, obviously, they have showers at second tier stuff. This place... Some prisons, showers on the third tier. But no, showering on the first tier. On the second tier, there was a northerner, and a cop walked by. You know, we're on lockdown, been on lockdown, straight opened up his door. I know we did it on purpose. Give the two to action. A lot of those, especially in northern prisons, a lot of the cops would be like northern sympathizers. And down south, same thing. And I know the whites had their white sympathizers. Anyway, this cop straight let him out. This northerner came out on the tier with a knife in, knife in his mouth like this. Jumped off the second tier like... Damn, it was on the tip of my tongue. Tarzan. And went in the showers and start sticking white boys. On and cracking. So, I go to medical. Which is something you do a lot when you're on lockdown. Because you want to give your cellie some cell time. Because you've been crammed in there 24-7. You get out to get him some cell time. And vice versa. You get out to stretch your legs. To meet new people. To pass kites around to different yards. Different buildings. That sort of thing. So I go to medical, and I finally meet this wood. It was right across from me. Right across from me, a couple cells over. And I had a chance to meet him yet. I seen him, said what's up, threw kites, what's up, my boy? Because you want to know who all the whites are. You know, you're slammed, people are coming in, you got to keep track of everybody, because you're in the middle of a big race riot. So I meet him, what's up, what's up, wood, what's up? He's kind of laying it on thick. That's a little tough. Hardcoring, we call that. See what I did there? Hardcore and boring. Like a mixture of mouth, he's hardcoring. It's like, hey, what's up, dog? Then he's like, man, I need to get me a piece, bro. I need a piece. I was like, all right, I got you. He's like, what? He's like, you got me. I was like, yeah, I got you. He's like, when? He softened up a little bit. When, when, are you, when are you gonna give it to me? I said, when we get back to the cells. I got you, brother. Because I had just moved in this cell. There was a wooden knife in the mattress, and there was a big old dowel, a wooden dowel, that the dude who lived there before me was using as a channel changer. But I looked at it, I was like, damn, the perfect little, little piece. Broke it down in two nice pieces, sharpened them up, put a handle on it. Who am I going to give him to? This dude across from me is like, I need a piece perfect. I got you. He's like, oh, um, well, he's like, she's going to get to me now. He's like, well, I should probably ask my celly. I should probably um, write my old lady and ask her. We're doing this time together, brother. And I, I, I need to consider my options. I should probably wait till after my birthday. Yeah, I'm, yeah wait, wait till my, my birthday to, to slide that to me. In fact, I'm going to make a, a big cake and stuff. You're welcome to come over and bring that piece with you. I'm like, when's your birthday? Next month. So I'm going to wait till next month to get this piece? I thought you just said you wanted it. Yeah, yeah, I do want it. Dude, slide to me now. Slide to me when we get back to the sales, dude. Yeah, give it to me. Don't use it, dude. Dude, you give me that piece. I'm like, bro, I've witnessed all your emotions. You're like a spectrum. Okay, I'm going to slide it to you, brother. Give it to him. 
Once he had possession of it, just a day or two later, I get a kite back saying he lost it. He lived on the yard side, meaning his window faced the yard of Saw Dad, all North Yard. And he said he tried to tuck in his window and Saw Dad, and the windows are a little square. Some would be missing. I believe some of the windows even open too. I was trying to remember. I think some of the windows even actually opened a little ways. He tried to put up in there. Supposedly it fell. Fell where on the yard? So now another race. Now anybody can grab it. Did it fall in the cell below you? I was like, hell no, dude. You're a straight knack. A oh, lame status. I didn't get him in trouble with his homeboys. And I'm not, not even telling you what town he was from. I remember. Trust and believe that. I did not get him in trouble with his homeboys. They probably for sure would have removed him for losing a piece like that. But I did tell my homeboys. I had a couple on the tier. Don't mess with that dude. Straight fucking lame, J Cat. Anyway, be that as it may. See, he messed it up for himself. Start off pretty good, though. And names will follow you from the streets. For instance, there's this full name Q Tip. I didn't even like this dude. In county jail, these two blacks were playing catch. You could check out gloves, mitts, and just, they're playing catch. One of them missed the ball and went rolling. This white dude who doesn't have any tattoos, he's like some probably 45 year old dude, never been to jail, there for DUI, not really hip to the politics. I mean, he barely knows what he's supposed to do. He's getting by. He's definitely no dude's been in and out. He's fresh. He goes and picks up the ball. You know, just out of courtesy and throws it to him. So Q-Tip and a couple other dudes see that. Like, whoa, dude, can't you play catch with the blacks? But it's like, dude, he wasn't playing catch. He got the ball for him. Yeah, but that could look bad, blah, blah, blah. Set a bad example. Say straight, politic. Stirred the pot. Made a big old fucking ish out of it. End up getting that dude jumped and beat up in the bathroom. And once they were done beating him up, they finally knocked him down. And the Q-Tip ran there and gave him a kick when he's on the ground. I saw that and I was like, yeah, dude, straight Pinocchio. I don't dig a Stilo at all. That's... Solid motherfuckers don't do that type of shit. That's a nah, dude. I'm just weakness. I didn't really, I wasn't feeling him. He gets out from that time, during that bit of time, he gets out and go does the robbery. Him and his fucking crimey. They end up getting caught. He does. He gets caught and he tells on the dude he did it with. And so that puts it all off on him. So that dude gets busted and the Q tips like scot free. What? Put off on dude. Then he ends up going back into prison, while school reception on something totally unrelated. And I give him props on this, though. When he comes in, he's claiming skinhead. Claiming skinhead. but Because he, he knew he'd have a little layer of protection. Because skinheads are not going to allow just a bunch of woods to come push up on some woods. Some hometown woods. Come sweat them about some shit. He's like, I'll try to blend in with them. But it's funny because they called him Q-Tip because of big wild hair. And even though he was skinhead, he didn't bother cutting that off. You know, he really dug his big crazy hair. You know, it's like his namesake. So he didn't get rid of that. And so it was kind of tough. The dude's who lived in his town from his neighborhood, knew the whole ordeal, but didn't have paperwork, really was trying to push issue. They weren't even in the same building, different building, sending kites over there. You gotta handle it. You gotta handle it. Trust me. Give me my word. This is what went down. This is what went down. And they finally, yeah, sent that dude out of there on a stretcher. He ruined it for himself. Some from the streets followed him on in there. Be that as it may. That's what will happen. And what else, though? Be my toes hurting like a son of a bitch. My toe hurts so bad. I hope I don't get sidetracked. Say like this is my foot. That'd be crazy if this is my foot. But there's like, I'll just call it a wart. It's kind of bump. It's been there for months. Say like it's right here on the inside of my pinky toe, which it is. But uh, this is where it hurts though. Tender to the touch on the outside. Why if the, the wound or whatever is here, does it hurt here? So sensitive. And I'm going to be going to work soon with some work boots and moving around. And getting, I got to get, I got to address this issue. And I went to the doctor once. And I hate the doctor. You got to wait, you know, two, three hours. I don't, I hate waiting. Shit's on pause. Finally get in there. Show him my toe. He's like, it's at his foot. And just left the room for a good chance to, uh, it's not Athy's foot, dude. Athy's foot itches, it spreads, it's rash-like. This is contained in one little area, it doesn't itch. Like, dude, I know Athy's foot, trust me, because I, I also do have that. Maybe he saw my Athy's foot and didn't even see the sore pinky. He's like, what? Get out of here, it's airborne. But dude, that kind of Athy's foot I have, I got it from prison. From their socks, funky-ass socks. And you get a pair of socks in there, brand new, and what you do is just wash them over and over. Because you don't want to put your stuff in laundry and to come back all funky or get something not what you put in. So you just get brand new underwear, brand new socks, and just wash them over and over. But after doing that, after, you know, for months and months, it doesn't really get clean. And just, you know, my, my feet, they're, they're, they're fun to hang out with. They're like, they're a fun guy. Anyway, be that as a man, man, where were we at? Shit, I got sidetracked. You know why I got sidetracked? Because my toe is hurting. But as for gangs, there's only one gang in prison, California prisons. So that's the brand. That's it. Know the gang. Any other gang you might hear of, Blue Team, Butte County Gangsters, Paramount Stoners, Baby Blue Wrecking Crew, those are all street gangs. They might be made up of mostly convicts, and they're all convicts, and they represent it maybe when they go into the pen, but definitely not a, a prison gang, because there's only one. Be that as may, 
and trip on this. Like one time I'm a Wasco reception, A yard. There's a dude I've been known for a long time. He's been in, I feel like I'm skipping something. This dude I've known for a long time. Anyway, I'm not gonna pause this new phone. I'm not, okay, so I'm A yard, and there's this dude, but he's not coming to Dabram. And hey, that's one of the things that are mandatory. I'm gonna get into this video, some things that are mandatory, like working out, mandatory, the kitty's mandatory, I'm gonna make a whole video on the kitty later. And coming to day room is pretty much mandatory. This homeboy of mine, I've known him for a long time, was not coming to day room. And so I asked him at dinner time, I said, dude, what's up with you? I don't think anyone else has noticed, brother, but I have, and what's up with you not coming to day room? He's like, well, I'm short to the house, I've got like a week or so left, I get grouchy when I'm short, I don't want to snap on somebody and be out of day room and just, you know, take something as disrespect when it wasn't meant that way and snap and cause a scene, so I'm going to stay out of the way, stay in my cell. I was like, all right, brother, I mean, it sounds good, I and mean, it's not my call, but if anyone else notices and they say you have to come to day room, you're going to have to come to day room, but I ain't not going to make an issue out of it. He ended up going home, and as soon as he went home, it was like three or four days later, a kite came for him from the hole. And what it said was he was supposed to, supposed to report to the hole because the last time... No, no, no. I'm getting sidetracked. My bad. He was supposed to... No, no, no. Supposed to report to the hole because he was part of a gang called Black Sox. And somehow it got out that this gang, Black Sox, was a prison gang. Either they said it or someone said they said it. It got misconstrued. So that got back to the fellas in the hole. And they said, what? There's some gang, Black Sox, out of Bakersfield. Says they're a prison gang. If any of them show up, make them report to the hole. So we get to the bottom of it. That's what happened to him. He came. Come to think of it, maybe that's why he was going to day room. He knew there was his word, his name was out there a little bit. So see with the black socks. It was a matter of time before they found out he was there and shot him that kite. But he was able to get out of there for the kite. Came to him. And I don't know what ended up happening. But I know this. It would have broke his heart. If he was two days in the house, they said, dude, look at this kite. You gotta go to the hole, homeboy. Because it's hard to get to the hole. You damn near have to pick up a case. He'd have been like, damn, he not would have been feeling it, dude. I could tell you just wanted to get the hell out of there. Anyway, like we all do. But some of us have different reasons for that. Anyway. Other than being a wooden prison, you could be a skinhead. And I noticed a lot of skinheads popped up. You know when I feel like a really skinhead movement really popped up being in prison? Is when the NLR died out. When the NLRs got validated and the books got closed. And, it, you know, really it kind of got shut down. It created a vacuum. And the skinhead thing really burst. Because if you're a white boy of wood and you come to prison, you, you want to be, maybe you want to be a part of something. That is violent. You know, the front lines, this movement. You want to, you know, and it was NLR for the longest. If you came and you want to do something a little bit extra than Pecker would. And you want to be a part of some gang. You know, NLR, you can attach yourself to that. You had to put in work. It's going to get crazy now. Now, no more NLR. What can we join if we want to bump it up a notch? What can we do? And it's skinhead. But you're not supposed to become a skinhead in prison, though a lot do. You have to do it on the streets. But just like my celly, the solid dad, he became one in prison. He was on level one yard, Peckerwood, started hanging out with some skinheads, put in some work, jumped somebody, went to the hole, then he came to level three into the cells. He was my celly, and he was talking that high power shit, some more hardcoring, some tough talk, and I'm like, please! And I'd fuck with his head too, because new skinheads would come in, some dude you could tell Miss Skinheads for a long time. Got all the tattoos and this crazy. Got the attitude to go along with it. And I was like, dude, I'm going to go tell that new skinhead that showed up. You became a skinhead in here. See what he has to say about that. He was just, uh, uh, uh. Of course, I never would pull his covers and fuck them like that. But, I mean, I would fuck them like that. Tell him. But I would not actually do it. But we were fucking with each other, man. Because he was trying to do me dirty. He wanted to get some tattoo work. And he was trying to move out to a different tier. I mean, to, a, to the third tier, different tier, to a different cell. To get some tattoo work. But I was like, dude, you gotta wait till I find a celly first before you move out, man. Because I don't want to just take some dude off the bus. Let me let me get myself a celly, and then you could just do it the right way. And he was trying to go behind my back and just fucking move. Kind of pissed me off. Anyway, that's another video, right? And what do I keep bumping against? Could it be my new guitar I just got? It's got my baby back, my guitar. Got it out of the pawn shop. See, a lot of guys, a lot of you guys say I bug people and bum money. No, I don't. I go just pawn my shit if I'm getting low. I finally got it back. What? So, where are we at, though? So, yeah, you could be a skinhead if you do not want to be wood, if you want to bump it up a notch, but you better find yourself a click on the streets. Do it the right way. So, you know what else is very, very, what you have to do, mandatory in there, is riot participation. It's at the very, very top. If a riot kicks off, even if you are running solo, let me answer that question. Can you run solo? Yeah, but you have to come in, get your paperwork checked out with your homeboys. Or if you're in county jail, get your paperwork checked out, get cleared. Then if you want to kick in the corner, do your own damn thing. Be my guest. You know, one is the loneliest number. You'll be bored, but people do it. But if a riot kicks off, you got to be there. Full force. 
No laying back and tucked in the cup. Oh, I didn't see it. Got to be there. And so after every riot, there'll always be like five or six dudes getting their asses getting get removed for non-participation. And you'll always trip uh, after a riot. Like who actually, because there'll be some goofy knack type dude, like, like you know, weak. But, you know, he's, he's, he's hanging out and he's, he's programming. He's a wood, but, you know, he's, mm, he ain't going to be there. I mean, this dude's going to be the first to run. And as it turns out, he's front line, just swinging like a mofo. I've seen that happen. Had to eat my words. And I've seen dudes I thought were just gangster to the max, big, swole, tatted back. I'm like, they're going to be front line ripping heads off. It kicks off and they run or prone out. So you'd be surprised by actually who gets involved. Chip on this. There's this fool named G.I. Joe in County Jail. See, he was in the army. He had all these crazy army stories. I thought a lot of them were bullshit, though, because even one time he's telling a story, and he's like, yeah, and this is the Marines. And I was like, you say Marines? Am I the only one that heard him say Marines? I'm looking around, looking at people, and they're like, you heard him say Marines? And I didn't say nothing. I didn't call him out. I mean, there's lies popping up all over the place. There's lies up in here. I didn't call him out. I'm really non-confrontational. I was like, whatever, dude, you're, you're bullshitting. But I thought that he actually really was, you know, Kind of military or something, I don't know. One time, though, he said he jumped out of a helicopter and, and, and forgot his parachute. And I was like, come on, dude. Like, that's enough. I can only take so much, dude. I call it bullshit. I mean, come on, bro. Make it believable. He's like, dude, brother, we're in a helicopter, but we're not that high. I forgot my parachute. Trust me. The only thing that saved my life was a stop, drop, and roll. I said, stop, drop, and roll. That's what you do when you're on fire, not when you're free falling. He's like, no, brother. Stop, drop, and roll. I hit the ground rolling. If that's not stop, drop, and roll, I don't know what is. You figure I was falling. I stopped and I hit that ground. It flattened me out, which made me drop, and I tucked into a roll. Dude, stop, stop, drop, and roll. Here, tell about it. Survive. Jumped out of a helicopter, no parachute. I was like, okay, gotcha. Big riot kicks off. G.I. Joey's probably out front telling someone his fucking army story from next door or some shit. He's always army this and army that. A riot kicks off because a black dude is on the phone, and he, and he lets it hang. They'll do that. If you have to go to the bathroom, if you have to go do something, you can let the phone literally hang by its cord for a limited time. Especially if there's a line and other people don't use the phone, dude, very limited time. You, just, you can't be there all day. And what is that time? How long could it hang? No one knows until someone finally gets sick of it and steps up and says something. He lets it hang. He goes in to watch like a football or some kind of replay. Like, oh, no, that, he was down. No, his foot was out. Fuck, everyone's like, oh, dude, was he out? Was he down? So he must have got caught up in all that. Like, no, he was out. Ugh. Forgot about the phone. Some white dude went over there and hung it up. Called his people. Hey, what's up? It's cracking. You guys gonna come tomorrow? He comes out there and he's saying nothing. There's bombs on the dude. There's white dudes out there. There's black dudes out there. Instant riot. G.I. Joe. We have these mini yards. It's a dorm. And then like a mini yard with a gate around it. And you go out that gate and it's a big yard. G.I. Joe runs out. Runs out of the mini yard. And, and, and there's all kinds of fighting. And he's doing this. And he like come in for a second, jump right back up. So he's like jumping up like he's fighting. There's a chain link fence separating him from everybody else. So, but he's right by the entrance. He would jump. Everyone's like, oh, 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 I gotta get out of here. The biggest, baddest, toughest dude. Stop, drop, and fucking roll. GI Joe himself ran and jumped up and down outside the gate to even play it off like he was involved, bro. And then afterwards, when the riot calmed down, the cops came. Only took like one or two people away. One black guy, one white guy, it was calmed down, it was cool, everyone's watching football. I don't even took the, they didn't take the people involved, they never do. They didn't take the dude, the white dude who got the phone, the black guy who came out and punched him, they just took random. Ah, this'll do. So we said, G.I. Joe, you gotta go in the bathroom with your ass beat for that maneuver you pulled. Your supervisors would not be pleased, dude. So, took him to the bathroom, two dudes were bombing on him, he actually did really well. We were chipping on that. You're actually kicking some ass. You did, like, you almost won the fight against those two dudes, G.I. Joe. You kicked ass. You clearly are a fighter and had chuckums, like my initial instinct told me. But it, what it is, you have no fucking heart. Your heart pumps Kool-Aid. So even though you're badass when b back in the corner, you're getting jumped, you have to fight, and wow, you're knocking motherfuckers around. It's when you willingly have to jump into it. Whoa, you can't do it. Ain't got the heart for that. You gotta be back in the corner to make a count. Come on, G.I. Joe. So, fucking that dude did not participate in the riot. Crazy son of a bitch. You know what else? It is enforced. Heavily. You cannot program with blacks any way, shape, or form. You cannot eat after them. Drink after them. Smoke after them. You could do business. But then you might get hated on. Like, now it's Arizona. This black dude, his people are bringing in like an ounce of heroin. And they give him the, the plastic wrapping. Like, throw this away. He's like, throw this away. Put it in his pocket. Sell it to me. A couple of jars of coffee. And I would just sit and scrape it and come up with like a half gram. For two jars of coffee, hell yeah, all day long. 
Then people are hating on, on me. Getting in front of black dude. Who cares, dude? What the fuck? Hater? You do business with them. I've had to put money. I had to hunt this dude. They were on lockdown. He put $100 in my books. And then I was supposed to give him 80. I gave him 70. Like, I'm sorry about that. And then that kind of like turned a little bit of an issue. So it's not always wise to do business. And people will get mad if you do business with them and it doesn't work out. But it doesn't matter. But you cannot program with them, sell up with them, eat, spread, work out, smoke. And then in county jail, there's it's definitely division. White area over here and the black area over here. Different tables. Well, I went in and I was acting bizarre, crazy. I thought it was because I got, I hit my head. I was driving and I... I Rear-ended, because I nodded out on heroin, rear-ended a cable van. Hit my head on the string wheel, went, went in acting fucking blah, 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 crazy. But as, as it turns out, I don't think it's because I hit my head. I think it's because I was coming down with those clodopins. Because I did some crazy stuff, man, when I was in there that time. One of them being, this black dude was sitting at his table, and he had some pinochle cards in front of him, shuffling them. And I came out of my cell, came walking by him, and I said, Dude, you don't know nothing about that fucking pinochle fool. He's like, yeah, I do. I deal it out. So you definitely deal it out. You can play pinochle, four players, three players, or two players. Deal out a heads up. Two player game. I actually was so far out of my mind. I sat down at a black table in county jail to play pinochle with this black dude. He dealt him out. We're playing. I'm like, all right, king's around. We're in deep pods, so like five cells out at a time. The dude Billy who had the keys is a porter, so his cell was open. Him and his cell, another skin. Billy's a skinhead. Him and his wood cell, his white dude, big old buff. Mofoker. I want to say mofo, but the cuss came out. So I'm trying to curb the cussing. This big old mofo, Billy Selly, this big old wood, he came out. The woods that were available got off the phone and like quit working out. Kind of walked, what in the hell were tripping on me? And I'm just like, ready? And then the black guy must have got nervous, thought they were going to move on me. Didn't want, they probably were. Didn't want to get involved. So he put the cars down and got off the table and walked away. And I sat there like, I got kings around. And I could see everyone's tripping. I'm like, whoa. And I had a moment of clarity. Like, oh, okay. So I got up, went to my cell. Billy came up. Splinter, dude. You trying to heart check me? He thought I did all that. Just like, dude, you ain't going to do nothing to me. You won't move on me. He's like, you're trying to heart check me to see if I'll even move on you. Are you? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I lost my mind. I've been doing a lot of crazy stuff. I, I realized I messed up. Wasn't even thinking was I wasn't. Dude, drugs are bad. I I always I tell people this and no one laughs for some reason. I can't get why people don't find this funny. But I took a shirt. It was a damn shirt, a V-neck shirt. It has a pocket on it. It's brown. It says Kern County Jail. I put it on where it was around my waist. I took the sleeves and tucked them in the sleeves, and those, those were pockets. And where it said Kern County Jail, I thought it said Volcom, and I wore that around my cell. I thought it was brown shorts. I thought it was brown shorts. I told that on here a couple times, and no one really like, dude, you guys don't think that shit's funny? I put a shirt on for shorts. No one told me, like, like it is. Just one day I woke up, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? But... Billy said, Splinter, I can't believe you sat down at the black table is going to play Pinochle with that guy. You could have, like, whoa, you're going to have to be disciplined. I'm going to have you do burpees. I was like, all right, I'll break out the burpees. He's like, sound off when you're done. But when you do burpees, the burpees weren't bad. It's who they had me do them with. Oh, my gosh. This dude, I was, even in my crazy, delusional mind, I knew well good enough to stay away from this fool. He drove everyone batshit crazy. He was just, he was hard time and he was stressed out because, uh, okay, I had to do burpees with this fool. I was like, damn it. But trip on this. This dude, been in and out of jail, in and out of prison his whole life. He finally gets out. He, he's tired of it. He wants a job. He goes to this thing called West Tech. And he takes, it, it's schooling, oil field schooling, all kinds of schooling you could do to get a job in the oil fields. He takes them all. The passport, the forklift, the confined space, the first aid, everything, all of them. He takes all of the freaking fucking things. And now he's like certified to the gills and he goes out and can't get a job anywhere. No one is, is hiring him. He's like, I got every certification you could possibly imagine from West Tech. No, I can't use you. Sorry. And after a month of applying, he gets drunk, he steals a car and he's back in jail on his way to prison. And he's just so bummed out. He's pissed off. I tried, brother. I did all that schooling, dude. I tried. I get out. I try to get do right, man. And look what happened. Right back in here going to the pen. Like do burpees with him. I was like, no. Sure enough, man, we started doing burpees. He's just like... Seven classes I took, homeboy, down there at West Tech. Eight hours a day, brother. I was down there at West Tech with those classes. Nine dollars an hour, brother, is all I wanted to make, homeboy. Ten months, what I'm going to have to do on this fucking year with half, brother. I was like, bad shit, crazy dog. Whoa, quit talking about West Tech and your job. Poor guy, though. Could you imagine that? He really wanted himself a motherfucking job. 
And I gotta quit saying the F word. Why does this slide out so easy? It makes me mad when I watch, watch these back and F word freaking falls out. Anyways, love you guys. Point of POV crew shirts are here. You guys know that. Big pile of them. I have a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna have to start handing them out. And um, no one's really hitting me up for them. I got large only. I will get other sizes soon. When I send them out, I send them out with stickers and a letter. Hit me up if you want a shirt. Hit me up if you want some stickers like Ben did. Just send out your stickers, brother. Other than that, my bad. I know videos every day. Look, my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. I didn't do a video yesterday. I got caught up. I didn't want to touch on it. Well, I'm not going to touch on it. It's too personal. If you read the community tab, you'll know. I got caught up. Had to do my break. Something else in my personal life. Is what it is. You want to call it an excuse? You can do that because it is an excuse, but it's a damn good one. So I'm gonna do another video tomorrow because I already said till the end of the year. It's like I said, man. So, and I'm not sure what tomorrow's video is gonna be about. And I hope you're feeling this one. I hope everything's good. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We're already getting pushed, getting ready to push in December. Can you believe that? Damn. So what else? I just feel like I want to share something else. I'm so happy I got the guitar, man. What? Let me see. Yeah, man. It's this guitar, man. I love it. It's like you can't mess up. Cut the string, let it fly. Peace.